Welcome, my name is Dennis and today we are going to talk about coagulation pathways. Now we should note that we have two pathways in this. We have extrinsic pathway and intrinsic pathway. So we shall start with the extrinsic pathway. Now, for those ones who love mnemonics, we have 7 here for the extrinsic pathway and then we have 12 to 11 for the intrinsic and then 9 to 8. All those ones will involve activation as we shall see. Now, we shall start with the activation, activation of proconvertin, and this is going to be done by tissue factor. This is proconvertin. You should make sure you understand and be able to differentiate these clotting factors. So this is activated, and if you really want to understand these uh, names for these uh, different clotting factors, you can check on our previous tutorials at medical school tutorials. So after here, we shall have activation of factor 10 and this is now this a means activated and wherever you see just know that clotting factor is activated this is a platelet phospholipid these are platelet phospholipids these are calcium ions and we shall first leave this at this and we shall go to the intrinsic pathway for the intrinsic pathway it is basically platelet contents Now for the platelet co uh, contents, they will be released and then we shall have activation of uh, factor 12 which is also called contact factor or Hegeman factor and this is surface contact which will activate it to activated Hegeman. Now the Hegeman will come and together with high molecular weight kininogen and precalicrine will form activated 11. Activated 11 will come and will activate 9. Now this is activated 9. Activated 9 will come and will activate 8. Now 8 is one which will finally activate 10 to activate 10. Now you should note that all these processes and activations involve calcium and platelet phospholipids except the first two steps of the intrinsic pathway which is activation of 12 and activation of 11. Now we are back here where we have activated 10. Now activated N will activate prothrombin which is from the liver Prothrombin to thrombin. Now, after the formation of thrombin, it will, acti it is, it will also further activate more clotting factor 5. Remember, this process of activation of prothrombin also involves tissue factor and clotting factor 5, which is also called labile factor. Now, after thrombin, we shall form, we shall have to activate fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is also from the liver. Fibrinogen will be activated to fibrin. Now fibrin will be will be forming fibrin polymer in the presence of fibrin stabilizing factor, which is also factor 13 in the presence of calcium. And then finally we shall have the fibrin polymer. 